If we are to truly tackle the challenges we face, we must radically change our mindset. What got us to where we are today won't get us to where we need to be tomorrow. We need to make space for new and different thinking, thinking that will actively challenge traditional ways of problem solving. As community groups, businesses, governments and NGOs, we need to work together to radically reinvent. We must apply innovative global thinking, adopt emerging technologies, seek to experiment and uncover new voices. Join me as I sit down with some of Australia's leading and emerging voices, tackle the tough questions and hopefully share some new ways to address our global challenges. Joining me today is Tyson Yanker-Porter, acclaimed author of the award-winning book, Sand Talk, How Indigenous Thinking Can Save the World. Tyson is a member of the Apalek clan in far north Queensland, is a senior lecturer in Indigenous knowledge at Deakin University, an arts critic, carver of traditional tools and weapons. He's talking to us today from the Coolan land in Melbourne, Australia. Welcome Tyson, and thank you so much for joining me today. Let's get started, Tyson. I've finished reading your book, um, and in there, there's a beautiful story about a young boy and his out of the box approach to problem solving. Society tends to place rules around how we learn and think and respond to problems. Disruptive thinkers break those frameworks and ways of problem solving, and often that's not really well received. So you, you wrote, and I love this, this phrase in your book, that the next generation of disruptive thinkers could be found in the detention room of any high school. But in these times, are disruptive thinkers really the rebels? But that, see, that's interesting. Just, just the concept of, um, you know, of good thinkers being sort of re rebels or iconoclasts, you know, that's kind of a real... Um, mythology and, and I'm sure I, I've been radicalized by that since the 70s watching like every single movie every single tv show every single book is all about that rebel who's you know thinks his own way and goes his own way and bucks against the system you know and I guess a few decades of that everybody thinks they're they're the rebel that's thinking differently you know and that has just um so exponentially increased so it's interesting that that kind of rebellious, disruptive thinking is now the norm and is now actually causing more problems um, uh, than offering solutions. So I, I guess you, your way around that is if, you know, examine your thinking. And if you, if you see yourself, your thinking as being diametrically opposed to somebody else's, you know, rather than in dialogue with that, then probably you're not doing good thinking. Climate change is going to result in Australia looking very different. Um, and the climate risk is something we're going to have to grapple with as a society over the coming decades. How will this impact where we decide to live, to build, to grow our food, and I think most importantly, to maintain the communities across Australia? Well, for a start, if you don't move with the land, the land will move you. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's being able to create populations that can be mobile. And that necessarily means rethinking um, what real estate is. Um, so, you know, you're unable to move to high ground as needed, for example, you know, yeah. so that needs to happen. And then also, you know, we need to learn a lot of the coping strategies for uh, the big population disruptions that are coming. And, and that's good, a good thing to talk to um, that sort of recent knowledge from that you can find from Indigenous people who've dealt with dispossession and all that sort of thing. And, um, but also, um, you know, a lot of uh, refugee communities, you know, it's uh, all these practices, there's wisdom from all of the world's cultures and from yeah. all everybody's ancestors have wisdom and everybody thinks they've lost it. You know, it's only been a century of industrialization. Yeah. It's only been a century that the system of nation nations has existed. Yeah. You know, uh, nationalism is only a century old you know, there is wisdom handed down and it's in your language, it's in sayings, it's in songs, it's in all kinds of things, it's in prayers, it's in texts, all these things have been handed down and your ancestral wisdom is there. Could you tell me a little bit about what that looks like at the work you're doing in the Indigenous Knowledge Systems Lab at Deakin University? 
how do you integrate Indigenous thinking and ecosystems approach into academia and into traditional science practices? To do that, we have to step outside of the usual um, uh, cycles of, of testing, measuring, investigating, reporting, and then research translation at the end uh, that you find in the academy traditionally. You know, um, we need to step outside of that. And so we're very committed to um, operating more like a think tank but responding in real time so that there's um there are ideas and our thinking is is constantly publicly available and every week you know there's more of that thinking going out into the world and um that you know and we'll pick up some of those threads and run the research projects and um, our grad students will be doing their you know theses um around those things but at the same time we're seeding ideas out there we're not um you know, holding these jealously, jealously guarding them. And that's our IP and all that sort of stuff. We're just, okay, well, we've got to be the goose that laid the golden egg. Instead of getting one golden egg and clutching that forever and saying, that's mine, we need to be throwing out a golden egg a day. <laughs> and we need to be putting that out into the world. So I guess at the Indigenous Knowledge Systems Lab, we, we're, we're doing that. We're laying the golden eggs and we're sharing them around. Tyson, there's been a, a lot written in the last few years on this idea that we're going into the fourth industrial revolution, which if I simplify things is really focused on advances in intelligent technology. Do you think the next revolution has to be industrial or should we be thinking about it as the first ecological revolution? Well, you know, that's tricky because, I mean, I think we, we need to be thinking about already um what's going to be needed you know for those next generations coming that that will be beginning the thousand year cleanup yeah you know because that will be the the next revolution you know i think we're in a very short-lived re revolution now which is a digital one um you know which requires just so much infrastructure just to kick the can down the road for a bit longer but you know that can only last for as long as rare earth metals last this, uh, this sort of digital revolution right now, what's required to power it, you know, to fuel it, but also to build it, you know, uh, the amount of sand that needs to be scraped out of the seabed because the terrestrial sand's finished pretty much, um, you know, in order to build the buildings to house the servers, um, which are increasingly massive, 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 <laughs> um, and to provide for the infrastructure for, you know, increasing populations and populations moving, you know, all these sorts of things. Um, and just to keep that growth going, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I think we need to be looking towards what the next uh, revolution will be, you know, and it can be, it can be a cataclysmic fall, you know, or it can be, you know, something that's quite wonderful. Um, yeah. And but I, that's going to take everybody's mind <laughs> working on that one and a massive changing of cultures. And it needs that thousand flowers blooming, you know, every bioregion, every community doing things in different ways. And, um, yeah. you know, but then being interdependent enough to be communicating what they find. That's a really optimistic point, I think, to wrap up our conversation, uh, Tyson. The fact that whilst we're all different, we are through our country interdependent on each other and in some ways it's that collectiveness that can help to solve some of the big challenge that you talked to us about today thank you so much for joining really appreciate it no worries same way